So moving into the coastal unit, uh, first case study we really want to look at is the idea of sea level rise, and for that we use East Anglia in the UK. Uh, now, East Anglia makes a great case study uh, for the possible effects of coastal flooding due to the fact that the majority of the land in East Anglia is no more than three to five metres above sea level, so it's obviously very vulnerable to any sea level rise. So if we start off our diagram, we have our low flat land going in to the sea. First off, we want to look at the rates of sea level rise. So that's occurring at the moment at about two millimetres a year. Now, we look at the causes for that. And actually, if we look at the causes, there's two main ways. We have eustatic uh, sea level rise, which is being caused by two things. Firstly, obviously, global warming is equal to melting of ice caps and on-land glaciers. That's obviously resulting in an increased amount of water into the sea. And we also have thermo expansion. So that's actually just the water taking up more room simply due to the fact that it is actually warmer. We also have something called isostatic rebound. Now that's quite sounds complicated but it's actually relatively simple. It's a more localised change in sea level and it particularly affects the uh, UK due to the nature of ice or previous ice that we had on the UK. If you imagine the UK as a bit of a seesaw, during the Ice Age, if this is the north and this is the south, the north would have been weighed down by a large block of ice. That would have lifted the south out of the water, therefore making the sea level appear lower. Obviously, we're now seeing a change in that as the ice in the north of the UK is melting, or has melted, and as a result, the north is now starting to come back up, whilst the south is starting to re uh, sort of stabilise and move its way back down towards the sea. So that's two reasons why uh, places like East Anglia are so vulnerable to sea level rise. Now we kind of want to look at obviously what some of the impacts of this could be. Now the first thing you want to think about is obviously the breakup of communities as people have to move away, they have to move their homes or worse, leave their home behind and move to another area. That leads to a social impact where communities are broken up. Uh, you could use Great Yarmouth as an example here. We also see a loss of business and economic impact. It's estimated that sea level rise and flooding would cost the East Anglian economy somewhere in the region of about £5 billion. Pounds. Okay. That'd primarily be through the loss of agriculture, okay, as farmland was flooded. Okay, but it would also be due to a reduction in tourist numbers. Places like the Norfolk Broads, obviously a massive tourist attraction for that area. And also the loss of businesses. A nice example would be uh, Chroma Golf Course, which was recently threatened by floods. Uh, other social impacts, there has been a history of uh, flooding in East Anglia and obviously that can result in uh, possible deaths. One other big economic impact would be, firstly, the, uh, the loss of biodiversity and species uh, due to flooding. Uh, partly as well, uh, crops would fail and certain plants would fail to grow even after the flooding had gone because the uh, salt uh, would have got into the soil making it too saline. But you would also see on the positive an increase in some habitats such as salt marshes. So there is a little positive there. Now what's quite nice as well is you can link this case study uh, to your hard and soft engineering strategies. Things such as your sea walls rock armour and groins. We will look at those in more detail on, at the uh, Barton on Sea case study.